So welcome. In November, winter is just around the corner. It's getting cold. And we're going to be today talking about how you can transition from your existing FTP solution to using an accelerated file transfer, such as File Catalyst. Once again, thank you all for attending. If you do have any questions, please type them into the question box of the GoToWebinar interface and I will get to your questions at the end of my presentation. I'm usually scheduling about uh, 20 minute, 25 minutes for my presentation and I have about 10 minutes for questions. So uh, please type them in as we're moving along and I will answer them at the end. Uh, so who should watch this? Well, first of all, thank you all for coming today and watching this webinar, uh, uh, going through this webinar with me. Uh, I just wanted to go through why and who should watch this. So first of all, any current users or administrators of FTP systems, and not only FTP systems, also FTPS or SFTP. Uh, these are all usually large file movement uh, applications. We'll need that, uh, could, should consider uh, our application. Um, anybody that is moving files larger than 500 megabytes. Um, of course, if you're moving 1,000, 100 megabyte files, we can also be helpful. But this is sort of a rule of thumb where I think our our product, we think our product is becomes beneficial to, to your organization. If you're moving any files to overseas or international locations, and by sending or receiving, so you're either you're either you're consuming this data that someone sent you or you're sending it. You gotta have at least 10 megabits of bandwidth. So if you're on a cable or a DSL connection and you're sending files across town, uh, acceleration is not really gonna help you out much here. Uh, but if you have 10 megabits or more or sending files far b b geographically far apart, then this is, this is a solution that you should consider. Uh, any way, anywhere where you're working with uh, contracts or SLAs that stipulates that you have to guarantee the delivery of the files or the media, and also there has to be a, there's a time constraint when this media has to be delivered. Uh, those, uh, th those clients should look at our, our software for sure. Uh, anywhere where you're sending multiple versions, so for example, uh, in post-production, we're making a new video file, we see a typo in the credits, and now we have to re-transfer the whole file with the few frames at the end fixed. Well, this is, would be a very good uh, good tool for it because it will minimize how much data is sent, and those new v versions will come through much faster. And if you're moving files to a disaster recovery site, uh, so if you're doing any backups, uh, you have your main head office and a disaster recovery site in a different part of the world, you want to move all your data daily, weekly, uh, whatever it is. And finally, this is mostly for our live TV uh, and media sports production um, uh, audience. Uh, if you're moving growing files, grow files being file is locked, it's increasing in size, and you wish to transfer that file before the file completes. So, so this is what this is why you should uh, look at our webinar today. Um, what we do, so my name is John Tkachevsky. I am the president and co-founder of Unlimitex Software. Uh, Unlimitex Software are the makers of File Catalyst product suite. And today I will be uh, uh, talking about our products and how you could make a transition from FTP to use our products. Um, to give you uh, what we do here, what's our what our main goals here when, within File, File Catalyst are. So. We work on, you know, providing enterprises with the right file transfer tools for their business. Uh, we're not uh, we're not looking at consumer applications. We're really built. Our entire organization here is built to support enterprises in file transfer movement in, in moving data files. Uh, we have acceleration technology, which I will get in a minute. I will get into in a minute. We also have, you know, we're trying to make all these file transfers easy and simple for the enterprise users. So, you know, you don't want to have complicated scripts, for example. You want to have something simple. Uh, we want to provide you all the tools to integrate and easily add acceleration technology into your existing business infrastructure. 
and we want to provide you all the management, security, monitoring tools to move those large data sites securely and efficiently. Finally, a lot of companies these days want to move large amount of data into cloud vendors such as Amazon or you know Windows Azure, so we do have solutions for that as well. So one of the first questions I always get when I go to a trade show and I'm talking to visitors to our stand is why are we so fast and this question cannot be answered without really getting into any greedy details of networking technology so here this explanation I always try to shorten it and make it uh, easier and quicker I went from I think 12 slides in about three four years ago now I'm down to two slides on that but it's still we're going down into any greedy details. So to answer your questions why we're fast, I got to first talk about TCP. So TCP is the main uh, transmission uh, control protocol for all the file, any protocol on the internet today. Uh, it powers, as I mentioned here in my slide, HTTP, FTP, SFTP, SMTP, SIFs, anything on, on the network today uses TCP. Uh, TCP was built in the 70s. Without it, internet would not could not exist. It uh, provides reliability, error checking, make sure that all your transmissions comes in order. Um, it's 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 the core protocol. Unfortunately, this protocol has been designed for short and small messages, but has not been designed for sending bulk data. So if you're sending a lot of data, TCP is not the optimal protocol for that. The, 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 the TCP was designed in a slower, in the era when the con network connections were much slower. And uh, this, this, connectivity, this connectivity also reflects in the design of the TCP. So slow connections are working just fine, but once you go into today's world where you have a connection of 100 megabits, 200 megabits, a gigabit, or even 10 megabits, this is not the optimal way of doing things. So, so what happens with TCP is that TCP is a very uh, sequential, very uh, linear way of moving data. So you take a packet of data um, and you, you, you send it over the wire and then your receiver on the other end sends you back a message set saying that they got it. Then you take the next little chunk of data you send it to the receiver, you wait for an acknowledgement that you got it, that the, that the receiver got it. So as you can see, every time I send a little bit of data, um, I have to wait for that acknowledgement to arrive back to me before I send the next little bit chunk of data. Uh, so what happens is that this, this problem, this very uh, linear way of uh, sending files, sending data is, is, is slow because the line is never busy because you're always sending a little bit of a little bit of data on at, at a time on on the line uh, this is also a problem when you start in having latency on the line so if you're if your network connectivity uh, let's say you're connecting from uh, Toronto to London UK if you're connecting to UK you're gonna have a latency of about 100 milliseconds or 120 milliseconds and every time you send a little bit of data, you have to wait a tenth of a second to send more data. Uh, the more, more, more dramatic uh, illustration of that is, if let's say you want to send data from uh, UK to Australia. Well, now you have a latency of about a third of a second. So, you know, every time you send, I, I'm not quite sure exactly what the TCP window size is, but let, 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 it's, it's usually in the range of about, you know, 30K. So if you send a 30 kilobytes of data, you have to wait a third of a second. At this rate, doesn't matter what speed you have of your network, you will never be able to maximize the bandwidth because you always are constrained to wait a third of a second before you send the next piece of data. So it really, that's what TCP, why TCP is slow. Our acceleration stems from making this whole process better. So what we've done is we, we've used another protocol called UDP, which has also been built in probably in the 70s as well, um, for moving data. So we're, we're sending multiple blocks of data at the same time, and we don't, uh, we don't wait 
uh, we don't wait for uh, acknowledgements. We only acknowledge the exceptions, uh, meaning that if I can, I can continuously send data and only acknowledge what, what, uh, what, what if something, if I'm missing something on the line. The uh, the UDP on its on itself is not uh, capable of you know congestion control or or retransmission of lost data. So this is all what we've built into our application. So we basically took and we rewrote TCP in a proper way right inside our software. So you can now send files as fast as you want. So here's the illustration how this uh, how this all works in uh, in TCP uh, in UDP with file catalyst. Multiple packets of data are being sent. Uh, the uh, re the receiver acknowledges only data that is lost, and like this we can maximize the bandwidth and optimize what's what's being sent. We're also then you know not affected by uh, latency or packet loss because we'll be always sending files continuously on on that line. So this is what gives you that 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 speed optimization. So what kind of speed uh, bandwidth? The bandwidth improvement is quite dramatic, and the the uh, that that speed improvement actually gets uh, even bigger as the line speed gets higher. So here's my illustration for a gigabit and ten gigabit and ten gigabits. Of course, if you had let's say a hundred megabit connection. Well, you would have to, you know, multiply this by probably 10 or so. Um, uh, so, for example, here's, you know, LA to New York. If you want to send, a, you know, 10 gig video file, uh, this is going to take you, you know, five hours with FTP. We can do it in a minute and a half. And with 10 gigabits, well, now you can see really a big improvement in speed. FTP is still at the same speed, but now we're going in 8.4 seconds. So it doesn't matter what example. The, the key numbers here are really that RTT, or round trip time, or the latency, the delay on the network, and, uh, and the speed, the line speed. So it doesn't matter what example you give me either above here, so let's say 100 megabit or 10 megabits. I can just, you know, make up the math and say, well, 100 megabits it would be, you know, 10, 15 minutes for file catalyst versus, you know, you know, the several hours with uh, with FTP. So how does this all work and why is this all, uh, how this technology can work? So this is a, what we what we offer is a client server application. So meaning that you on one hand side you're going to have your storage where where all your data or media resides. You're going to connect this to a file catalyst server. This is all a software application. So we'll just give you an application that you install on your own on your own infrastructure on your own network. This is a simplistic deployment but I just want to keep it easy to, for 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 everyone to understand uh, you know of course here you have a firewall and DMZ zones and everything else but uh, just just to keep it simple this file catalyst server will be connected to the internet and that internet connectivity uh, will be anywhere it could be anything it could be your landline so it could be like a 10 10 hundred megabit fiber connection it could be, a, you know, microwave link. It could be satellite connectivity. It could be a, a 3G, 4G, LTE type of network. Any kind of IP network here. And then from from on on this network, on the other hand side, we have different client applications that uh, different client applications that uh, connect to the server and can either upload data to the storage or download data from the storage. So here's, I'll give you some, why there's five of them? Because there are different use cases. So for example, here's a hot folder application. The hot folder application is an automation tool. So the hot folder will have a folder here locally somewhere, and it will say at 3 a.m., wake up, wake, wake up at 3 a.m., find any new content or new files that are on the, on the file, on the folder, and upload this content to your storage. Now, at 4 a.m., wake up again, hot folder, look for any new content on the storage, and download it back to the hot folder. So it's fully automated. There's, the end users really just interface with regular folders that, you, that, that they are used to on the, net, on, on the network drive. 
the express application is it's a very it's a one to one relationship with a regular ftp client so if you're familiar with like a filezilla or fetch or uh, uh, you know cyberduc uh, any of these ftp type of applications express looks like that it's a double pane application left hand side you can browse your local file system right hand side you have your remote files and then you can upload download files between the server and the client Web integration, uh, we have lots of options there. Uh, we have uh, an, uh, we have our Java applets, of course, for our file transfer, uh, for uploading only, downloading only, or two-way, as well as we have now Transfer Agent, which is a, a Java, which is a web-based file transfer that doesn't require Java applets. So it's just a plugin that installs into a web browser, and uh, you can you can download files directly via the web. API. This is would be our you know our Java, our C plus plus, our .NET, our SOAP, our REST. This, these are all the different APIs that we provide for doing this type of movement. And mobile. If you look at our, if you go to iTunes, if you go to iTunes or you go to uh, Google Play, you can search for File Catalyst and you can find our mobile app that you can download and then you can use it to move upload content to, to your storage via File Catalyst. Uh, we also have mobile APIs that, can, uh, that can, you can embed and to build your own mobile application from it. Uh, so, so some, some here, here are some of the features that we uh, provide you uh, with with our with File Catalyst Direct to help you migrate from FTP to uh, from FTP or FTPS or SFTP. First of all, File Catalyst Server can double as a regular FTP, FTPS, or SFTP server. So if you're if you already have uh, lots of users that are used to using FTP, uh, you can literally plug in file catalyst server instead and those users will be then transferring to an FTP server still using of course FTP and without acceleration but then you can start moving the key account key accounts and key users to acceleration using you know one of our client apps and uh, as I mentioned we have a multiple client apps uh, that that you you just have to pick the one that your clients will be most familiar with we have ALDAP and Active Directory integration, so you don't have to migrate all the users by hand. Uh, you can hook this up to uh, you can hook this up to, uh, to to your directory services, and all the users will automatically uh, import it and authenticate it against that instead of migrating manually. Uh, for those that are familiar with, especially with IIS, I think, or IIS FTP, there is an idea, a concept of a virtual folders there, where you can create a folder that is not a real folder in user's home directory, but it points to a completely different path on the disk. Uh, this is something we can uh, create as well. Uh, we have as well on the, on the, in the file catalyst direct server. Now more to look more on the client applications. Well, we have an Express client app. As I said, it's a very similar to FileZilla, double pane window where you know you can move files from left to left to right. So uh, users are familiar with that. And then, or if you're doing something more in the back end where you want to have auto more automation, our command line uh, command line tool is very easy to plug in and replace your existing FTP. Uh, FTP uh, command line that you're currently use, used to using in your scripts. So let's go through a quick demo here. Once again, I don't want to, because I got started a bit later, I don't want to spend too much time, but uh, let me go through uh, some, of the, some of the features here. So for so first I'm going to show you the interface of the file catalyst server. So this is the main application that where you define all your users uh, and the paths on your storage where they want to be. Now the storage can be anything. It can be a local hard drive. It can be a NAS. It can be a SAN. Uh, it, it, there's no there's no limit what where you connect. It has to be basically just a path that is accessible via basically just like a local path here. I, I'm doing here, for example, a C drive or D drive, or you can use, uh, you can use uh, UNC paths as well with the backslash backslash notation. So you can create your paths to all your users when they're connected. Every user you can control 
there. Uh, of course, there is FTP key, but uh, the biggest thing you can do, you can you can uh, control all their permissions, whether they can upload, download, modify, delete. Uh, you can uh, make the account temporary, where you can only uh, that will only work until a certain date, and then will stop. Uh, you have the ability to assign that user to different groups and different virtual folders as well, as I mentioned. And because we're using UDP, the, our protocol is extremely well designed for prioritizing your bandwidth. So for example, you can say, one, for one user, you can give them lots of bandwidth because they are very important. And uh, you can say, okay, you get, if you come online, you get the most bandwidth you get the, all, all my bandwidth versus another user that is you know versus perhaps not as urgent and they will only get a fraction of your bandwidth so this is something you can control very well in file catalyst and this is because we're using that UDP protocol to do this so so you can really prioritize your transfers from the user side from uh, so so that's that's on the user end uh, as I mentioned, you have your virtual folders as well, where you can insert a, a fake folder to a user's home directory, and the folder could be pointing to any other path. Um, the advanced side here, as I mentioned, we double as an FTP, SFTP, and a, and a, and a FTPS server. So here you can define your ports. So right now I'm running just 21 regular plain Jane FTP without encryption, but I could enable all the other stuff as well. Uh, for security, we got AES encryption for our data. We got SSL encryption on the on the command line. Uh, we have a number of um, uh, a number of uh, login security features, such as uh, uh, if a user fails five times, you can block the account. Uh, you can block also the account from based on IP so if an IP address tries you know multiple times to log in that IP will be uh, block for let's say 600 seconds or you could permanently block that IP so these are some of the security things and of course because we're like we're plugging into LDAP and Active Directory uh, you have all your you know you can you can bring in your password uh, your policy that you have on your directory server into here um, another another uh, thing you can do here is so so this is for the uh, for the uh, for the ports. You have also your IP filters, so you can specify which IP address is allowed to transfer files from and which not. Uh, you have your email notification when something you can either enable it to for everything or only for th when things go wrong. Uh, so this is some some another thing you can do, and then you have your system monitor where you can actually see all the transfers at a glance uh, and all your current sessions going on which I'll get in a minute so this is uh, this is the interface of the FTP server now I just want to show you quickly here the uh, Express client as I mentioned this is one of the uh, easiest apps to understand because it's a it's a it's a two pane it's a two pane window so here's my local file system here's my remote file system I just have to click on connect and select my server I want to connect to and here I am connected and now I can do is just simply browse for the files I want to send and upload a file For example, here I'm loading a file. And if I now let's go back to my server, what's going to be interesting now is that if I go into uh, into my server and I look under system monitor, now I have my session here. There's the session that I just connected. And I can also see the bandwidth and what's happening on the transfer side. So at this point here, I have this bandwidth. So I see I can actually kill this uh, session. I can override the priority bandwidth priority again on the fly. So as the transfer is going, I can on the fly assign it more priority or not. So this is something also important for business because you can, whilst the priorities are changing, and let's say you're in the middle of a five-day transfer, 
you can slow it down to allow something else to go through faster. Uh, you have these uh, these options here. So, but really, this is the Express app, just a simple to double pane window. Uh, the other app I wanted to really get into more is the hot folder app. The hot folder application is the client is much, it has a, lit, a lot more few features. So let me just go through them. So hot folder really combines, you create your sites, which will be your file catalyst servers, and your local paths on your computer. And then with the scheduler, you connect the site with the hot folder and you decide what to do. So you can imagine a hot folder could do multiple things. You could have multiple tasks or multiple sites defined and each site is doing a different, uploading a different task. Um, so if I just want to look at the, uh, the site properties here, the site properties you can see it's just uh, host username and password. There's really nothing, not, not much to it. The nice part is once you create a site, now you have actually a nice little connect dialog here that will give you a similar interface to Express, yet a little bit more complicated because here you now have the ability to create a queue, your ability to, you still see your local file system here, and you can still upload files, uh, you can still upload files to, 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 the, uh, to, 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 to the server, uh, sort of on an ad hoc basis. The the other uh, the, the the automated tasks are a little bit uh, are more advanced because here you now you're creating a scheduler, and if you're creating a scheduler, you want to be able to 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 define a lot more things to it. So let me show you here as a task I created for local uploads. Uh, if I want to create a task here for local uploads, so first of all I I give it a task name, I select which site and which hot folder, and whether I want to do an upload or a download. Believe me, before I put that, I didn't. we didn't have that arrow, people were getting confused what they wanted to do, so I think now it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on. Um, your schedule, do you want to do it, you want to check for new files on that folder every minute, once a day, user triggered meaning that you have to fire the hot folder manually, or you have also file system events. So file system events, imagine you have a folder with, with thousands of files. If you don't enable uh, file system events, we will have to scan through thousands of files to identify which files to transfer. With file system events, we just capture whatever was changed in the folder and send it right away without doing the deep scan of the directories. Um, your protocol, your connection, so you, how aggressive you want to be the connection, like how much bandwidth you want it to take over. Uh, you have the ability to uh, select your protocol, so in some cases where UDP doesn't work, you can set this to auto, and then hot folder will try to negotiate the best connection. If it cannot do a UDP, it will do a TCP-based connection, and if TCP-based connection doesn't work, it can actually default back to HTTP transfers. You also have your progressive transfers, which is the sending of the growing files option here, and you can auto-resume. So if the connection breaks, uh, hot folder will reestablish the connection and resume from the last place where, where it was successful. MD5 checksums, this is for people that need to have a guaranteed delivery is a must. Um, uh, so if your SLA or contract requires to guarantee delivery, well, MD5 checksum is, is the option you will need. Uh, you have because you can have multiple tasks defined. You can create your priority on the tasks, so one task is more important than the other. Um, uh, you can enable multi-client. So multi-client is really it's a new, fairly new feature. We've added it only I think in the spring of this year, and it really helps out when you have a lot of files to send. So let's say you're sending a folder with 30 files instead of going one file at a time we can enable multi-client and this will allow to send, let's say, two files at the same time or five files at the same time. Um, another thing you can do with this is that you can, uh, uh, you can, if there's a new file that appears in a folder while the task is running, the multi-client can add that file to that fo to the task and, and transfer it as well. You don't have to wait until the task is finished, goes to sleep, wakes up, 
whenever you set it up, let's see the next day, and then it will get transferred. So, so this is something we've added as well for, for multi-client. So it really speeds things up. It speeds things up, especially if you're doing a lot of smaller files. Let's say you have thousands of 5 meg files. Multi-client will make this go really fast. Data minimization, as I mentioned, we're really speeding up on the network side, but we also can do two things. We can do delta transfers. So if we enable that, we can actually do an, uh, we can only transfer the changes. So I mentioned the case where the file, same version of file is sent over and over. Instead of resending the whole file, you can just resend the deltas and rebuild the file, which speeds things up and lowers the bandwidth consumption. And another thing we have as well, compression. Compression is, uh, you know, a lot of the media and data today is already compressed when being sent, but if it not if it's not we can take care of that uh, another thing we can do is actually we can do single archive when you do a single archive that means if let, let's say you want to send uh, 5,000 smaller files well we'll build uh, we'll build everything to a single archive and send that file over uh, file set renames this is where you can create your remote directory and you can decide send smallest files first largest files last uh, newer files first older files later you, you can decide on your priorities and file site and the post task is what to do with the files that have been sent do you want to do nothing move them to a send folder delete them uh, you have the options here to select what you want to do with the files once they were being sent Finally, your post URL is, allows you to integrate this with maybe other web applications or content management systems that, you know, can, hot folder can notify that such and such file has been delivered. And email alerts, again, you can send it on error or success, as I mentioned, and this is uh, also available in, in the hot folder. So when, once the hot folder is running here, uh, let me just, maybe I can start the transfer here and open up the activity window as you can see the transfer is happening you can see here the file is, is going I can see my graph and at the same time here I can if I go on the server I have a very similar graph here where it shows me that bandwidth consumption and the files transfer is complete um, now the hot folder has also a very cool feature where that allows you to schedule your bandwidth so let's say you want to you want to go between office hours 8 to 6 p.m. you want to go at a slower speed so you can change that here and now if I execute this task now this transfer should take a bit longer because I lowered the bandwidth and you can see here I was going at 50 now I'm going at 10 megabits on that speed because I just changed the bandwidth. Um, if I go back to my server here, my server will also confirm that now I'm going at 10 megabits. This is the receiving rate. And I have my, my speed here. Uh, so it's receiving the file and if I see the session on the server side so as you can see I can I can see the transfers from both ends as a receiver on the server side and as a sender I have very detailed logs of everything that is happening so that's that's the, uh, the that's really the, uh, the the hot folder and and uh, uh, the introduction to file catalyst uh, technology so just to complete this, my apologies for running over time for starting a little later, but I just want to finish this. So what do, what do you should consider if you want to look at acceleration technology? Well, make sure you pick a technology that plays fair on other network that will adapt to speed. So you don't want your web browsing, your VoIP to die when you're transferring files. You want some, some stuff to be maybe slower, but still be successful. And this is our goal, is that when you're sending files, you want everything else on the network to be a bit slower but we're optimizing that network for the for your file transfers uh, make sure you look at solutions that is capable of publishes at least the maximum speed that's capable of um, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of accelerated file transfer solutions out there will hardly get you a hundred megabits for example so if you have a more than a hundred megabit line uh, those solutions might not be the right 
the right option because it just doesn't give you the right speed to what you want to do. Um, and you know, also consider are you going to be sending a lot of large single files or a lot of smaller files? If you're doing a lot of smaller files, well then you can maybe do multiple connections to optimize that. Uh, when you're doing many small files, well, look for something that will archive this into sort of a chunk and send those small files in a chunk. It's very time time consuming to send one file. You have to open up a socket, negotiate a connection, and transfer a file. So if you're doing a lot of uh, hundreds of small files, you're spending a lot of time building these connections up and tearing them down for very little transfer. So if you have something that can uh, deal with properly with uh, many small files, then uh, this can be optimized quite a bit. Uh, look at you know the security and the reliability features. Make sure there's an automatic resume. So if a connection drops, it will retry from the last point known. Make sure you have an MD5 checksum built in so you can guarantee the delivery. And look at the automation capability. Do you have a scheduling? Do you have an SDK to run all of this? Uh, what about web integration? Uh, is there, you know, a Java applet or a web-based client available that looks nice and is user-friendly? And finally, look if there's any management tools. Uh, is there something you can manage centrally? Uh, you can see all your transfers. You can connect all your nodes together and, and review the transfers. So, so these are some of the things you should be looking at. Um, some some of the products I haven't touched in this webinar, I just want to quickly say we have a file catalyst workflow uh, solution that's that's for web-based. So imagine it's a web-based portal for your file transfers. So if you want to send files to an email address, ingest files from the web, so do web ingest, so somebody just wants to send you a big file, or you want to create web shareable web folders. Uh, this is something that workflow can do. And then we have central. Central is really our management layer. So now imagine you, de you deployed File Catalyst server, you have 10 hot folders, you might have workflow out there, and now you want to see everything at a glance. So instead of connecting to all these individual hot folders or all these servers, you, you connect it to a console and the console will be able to not only show you where, notify you when things go wrong, but also you'll be able to configure these nodes and make changes on the fly as, as uh, things progress. And, and don't forget the API levels. Well, you know, if you're just starting, maybe this is, uh, this is uh, too much of a low level, but remember, if you've you got to have a full Java and C++ APIs, you've got to have uh, some web integration options, uh, Remote administration via REST would be nice, and don't forget your command lines. Uh, you got to have a very robust command line that you can actually integrate into your own scripting and shell scripts that you have written in the past uh, to your FTP solution. So we've been we've been helping a lot of companies to move away from regular FTP to an accelerated uh, accelerated file transfer. Uh, accelerate file transfers. Some, uh, here are some of our clients. Um, we have quite a bit of experience in moving clients away from FTP or, or SFTP into, uh, into you know, distributing data. If you are facing a challenge right now where you need to move a lot of data to a lot of places, uh, give us a call. We can, uh, we can definitely give you at least our thoughts on how this could be done in your current process can be improved and uh, we will be more than happy to uh, to provide you a free evaluation and a demo of our software if, if, if you wish so. So thank you very much again for attending uh, and I will proceed to questions now.